So I recently did a review on the Adidas Ultra Boost Lite and I told you guys in that video I wanted to give you guys kind of a deeper dive comparison between the previous model, the Adidas Ultra Boost 22, because they do look very similar, but there's quite a few differences between these two models. Also, in the comment section of this video, I saw a lot of comments that said they wanted to see a comparison next to the Nike Invincible Run 3, and I'll give you guys some kind of pros and cons of each. Obviously, they're very different types of sneakers, uh, even though they are in the same category, but I wanted to give you guys kind of my overall general thoughts on the models. So let's go ahead and get into the video and hope you guys find it informative. Now, I previously covered five different changes that we've seen on the Ultra Boost Lite. Number one, it features light boost instead of the regular boost, which is actually 30% lighter. The TPU is more flexible around the collar of the shoes, so it won't dig into your ankles as much. It features Primate Plus on the upper, which has an adaptive fit and it is quite breathable as well. It's made from at least 50% recycled materials and a reduced carbon footprint of 10% from the previous model. And they're likely the best running sneakers from Adidas that they've released. In fact, I've ran in these like three or four times this week, which is pretty awesome for me. I'm trying to get back into it finally. For a casual runner, I feel like this is a really great option for your feet. And then it's a little bit better again than the previous version. Also, it's more breathable than the previous version as well. They made some fine tuned adjustments to the knit material. The toe box is more breathable. Uh, the tongue is a little bit more breathable. The side panels are about the same. I mean, honestly, there's plastic TPU on the sides and then thicker material just to lock down your foot. So it's not the thinnest stuff out there, but it is definitely still something where you feel a lot of nice uh, airway coming through your toe box, something I appreciate it. The other major change is the LEP system. Like this one has pretty good spring back when you push down on it, but the new version is absolutely crazy the way that they change this LEP system. It has some like push down here and then it gives back. It's crazy because of the way they actually shaped the bottom of the LEP. So previously the LEP comes through the midfoot of the shoe, kind of like an X. This one's like a giant U that comes up and around the toe and then back down. And this one's really flexible and you have a, definitely a lot of bounce back when you're pushing down and letting go. So like that motion alone is insane. Like look at this motion here. Like, can you imagine just stepping off of your toe? It's just like, you get a lot of just jump back. Compare that to something like this and there's nothing. So, I mean, I don't know. The way that they engineered the LEP, it definitely is not just a gimmick. Like, it feels like some propulsion going on when you're wearing the shoe, but also just the overall feel of that and just seeing that bend is crazy. Also, I would say the overall look of the lights look very similar to the 22s. The inner liner is a little bit better than the 22s. I don't like how the knit kind of extends out on the 22s. On the light, the liner sticks out a little bit more. I actually like the, the feel of that better on feet. The cage improvements for the laces are there. As I mentioned, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more flexible. Uh, also, the midsole, the boost. How is the boost comparison to the previous model? And I would say that, as I mentioned in the review, it is interesting because they've done like three or four different versions of Adidas Boost technology. They've changed it over and over again. This is light boost. They had boost light in the past and HD and all this other stuff. But this one is actually probably the most functional and most similar to the original recipe, if you will. But being 30% lighter, it's a nice uh, little evolution that they made. So it is lighter, it is soft and responsive, just like the original one. Because the original one is so good, like it's nice that they were able to replicate that and make it a little bit different. Now, if you want something a little bit softer than Adidas Boost, because Adidas Boost kind of like paved the way for the foundation of all these different super foams that have entered the market, you do have the Light Strike Pro from Adidas that's crazy soft responsive and has that bounce back like all of the other like runners out there nowadays. But for somebody that's liked Adidas Boost since the beginning of the product, since the Pure Boost before the Ultra Boost even came out, it's nice to see an evolution of the product and know that it's actually something that I can put on my feet and actually wear functionally. And it's been really nice to be able to wear on a regular basis. And now before we get into the Invincible Run comparison, uh, just to give you a comparison to the OG of the bunch, the Ultra Boost from the 2015 era. Now this is a retro, but the new versions have a wider toe box in it, which is definitely welcome for somebody like myself that has a wider foot. The original tongue on the OGs was definitely padded more. It's something I really liked. I wish they would do more of on the newer versions. And the knit was a little bit less restrictive on the old pairs versus the new pairs. But I think part of it is because of the evolution of the prime knit, the fact that they're using 50% recycled materials makes it so it's a little bit stiffer than the free flowing nature of the original ones. But the extra containment is definitely welcome and it definitely helps with the stability overall of the shoe. On the bottom of the original pair, you had a little torsion plate down here to prevent from like twisting. I guess it's supposed to help overall stability of the shoe. And then on the new one, you have the LEP system, as I mentioned, which is just phenomenal. I really love the upgrade and the difference and the change that they made. On the new pair, even though a lot of this boost is on the sidewalls as well as underfoot, you do sit a lot higher on the Ultra Boost Lite than on the original ones. 
And overall, the boost experience on the 22s and the lights are much better and just overall more felt than on the original pair. Now, both of the pairs really have a light amount of boost in the forefoot of the shoe. You don't get a crazy amount of bounce back in the forefoot, but I think that that's the advantage of the newer pairs that they have here because you don't have the crazy bounce in the forefoot where you toe off. You do have the LEP, which does kind of help that transition in its sense by itself. So I think that that is kind of a give and take. Like you don't have the crazy squish there, but you do have a nice little transition. But anyways, one of the things you guys were asking for, the Ultra Boost Lite versus the Invincible Run 3. They're similar in price, I think $190, $180 for both of these. But I will tell you guys, the products that I have in my hand right here, they couldn't be more different from each other in the same exact category. All right, so my hair is like super crazy right now. Uh, I am wearing one of each of these right now. And I wanna give you guys kind of my thoughts on the feeling of the shoes on my feet. So the Invincible Run 3, without a doubt, is softer and squishier on feet. Obviously the a Zoom X is insanely soft and squishy, but there's something to be said about the Ultra Boost Lite. It's lightweight, but it's also like just natural motion is like super good. When I have them both on side by side, the Invincible Run does feel a little bit more wobbly on feet just because of the crazy cushion stack height. The heel toe transition is pretty good as well, but like right here, there's a little bit of wobble sensation um, as you're transitioning, at least when you have one of each shoe on, because the, again, the stack height is so much higher. The toe box width is pretty good on both of them, uh, both pretty wide, which is nice. You do feel like a little bit of a rollout on this side versus this, you feel pretty secure uh, in the Ultra Boost. The knit is better in the Ultra Boost in my opinion. I personally like it, uh, but I do like the loose tongue of the Invincible. And um, all in all, both of them are exceptionally good. They're just also exceptionally different. So if you like the soft, squishy feel, then the Zoom X on this side is just unmatched. But um, you can't discount like a firmer cushioning system, even though this is the new light version. It's actually really good on feet. So just throwing that out there, it's something that has better all around everyday feel, in my opinion. And even though it's firmer, versus the crazy max cushion of the ultra stack over on this side. They're both max cushion style sneakers, the way you could see just ultra stacks of, of foam, but on feet, they're a totally different story. The Invincible Run 3 has a crazy stack of Zoom X, which is by far softer and squishier on feet, for sure, there's no question. The Ultra Boost Lite does not have that same sort of crazy soft squishy feel that the Zoom X has in the Invincible Run. To answer your question from the beginning, which one should you buy? Well, if you want something that's ultra squishy, ultra like comfortable and really like lots of marshmallow action every single step pillowy steps then the zoom x in the invincible run is definitely the option over the adidas ultra boost 22 and i'll link both pairs in the description if you guys are interested in buying either of them and if you guys do use my links it does give me a little bit of a kickback and it lets the brands know that you guys mess with the channel it's greatly appreciated but just because the ultra boost 22 is not the softest and squishier of the two does that mean you discount this one completely i would say no because this has a lot of other things to offer the fact that you do have a better heel toe transition in the ultra boost 22 like the invincible run side by side felt a little bit clunky overall heel toe transition wise versus the ultra boost the ultra boost light just felt really really smooth as you're walking around and i think part of it may be because of the sculpting of the the heel here and then also the lep where you're pushing off and towing off it just feels good natural strides and stuff not anything overly exaggerated it doesn't have a crazy rocker sensation i definitely felt more unstable in the invincible run than in the ultra boost so the stability factor is there as well if you want something that you can really just wear all around everywhere you go and have the most amount of stability and stuff then obviously the ultra boost 22 is a better option than the invincible run i would say the invincible run you definitely sit higher off of the ground than on the ultra boost even though the stack of ultra boost looks higher you're actually sitting your foot like down here on the ultra boost and then it kind of cups up and cups your foot instead of just literally sitting on a bed of zoom x like you are on the invincible run as for the uppers of the shoes i would actually say that the prime knit plus is superior in my personal opinion than the invincible run 3 i'm not a big fan of the invincible run 3's upper to be honest from my review you guys would know that i actually like the original invincible run upper better than the third version because it's just a little bit i don't know scratchy feeling on feet overall both of them are obviously not bad but preference wise i would take the ultra boost it is a little bit more breathable as well i do like the detached tongue on the invincible run huge plus for me personally and then it is softer and has a little bit more cushioning on the invincible run than on the ultra boost at the end of the day though honestly either one of these shoes could be great and to be perfectly honest both pairs could be excellent if i was going to disney world or disneyland or something like that or vacation and i was going to be walking around a lot new york wherever it may be 
I actually would prefer both pairs of these shoes. I would wear the Ultra Boost the first day and then really get my miles in and have that stability and the sturdiness of being able to walk around in the Ultra Boost light. But then if my feet are a little bit achy or I just want a little bit of a recovery feel, then the Invincible Run definitely can get the job done. There's definitely more of an athleisure feel with the Invincible Runs than the new Ultra Boost. They're both very different, but depending on what you're looking for, either one of these could be really, really good. You guys know I love my soft, squishy feel, so this is definitely a must in my rotation just in general because I've had the previous two versions and now the third version is quite good as well. And the Ultra Boost line from Adidas I've been a part of since the inception in 2015, so every single year I've bought a new model. And this one being the best performance version that they've had, but I still think it crosses over to the lifestyle side quite a bit as well. It's comfortable, it's the most functional on feet. It has a nice transition from heel to toe, and, and you do feel pretty stable in these and you have some good breathability as well. So honestly, a preference thing, leave a comment in the comment section if you tried either of them. Let other people know what you like or dislike about either of the models. But appreciate you all for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative. I do like to do some of these recaps for some of these products. So if you guys find value in these type of videos, drop a comment, drop a like on the video, and I can do some with other models. Leave a comment and let me know what other models you guys would like to see a comparison to because I tried quite a few of them out there and uh, always like to be able to share my personal experiences and then have you guys share your comments uh, in the comment section as well. But anyways, if you guys want to buy either of these, check the links again in the description. Appreciate you all for stopping by and watching and hopefully we'll see you back on the channel for some more content. All right, peace guys.